Okay, welcome back to growingmicrogreens.com. We've got a series of instructional videos on how to grow your own microgreens. Makes a great hobby for your kitchen counter. Um, indoor gardening, you can grow it on a windowsill, you can grow microgreens on a uh, porch, whatever it is. It's fun, it's easy, it's fast, it's super healthy, delicious, and microgreens can be used in all kinds of things from salads to soups to sandwiches to garnishes. Uh, a lot of people even juice microgreens for uh, maximum nutritional value. So what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to talk about kind of day-to-day watering of your microgreens and taking care of these guys after you've taken off the blackout dome. So after you're going to after you're the you get to the point where you're exposing these guys to light, let's talk about what we're going to do to water these guys and care for them. And really at this stage, after you take the blackout dome off of the uh, off of your crop of microgreens, all we need to do is give them two things, maybe a third thing if you want to experiment with it. All they really need at this point is water and light. Very simple. And then of course we could, and uh, I, I maybe recommend experimenting with it, is a little bit of hydroponic plant nutrients, right? So FloraGrow is uh, available at growingmicrogreens.com. It's a very good hydroponic nutrient solution that you can mix into your water. And typically, if you follow the instructions on the label, it's very dilute. We typically recommend going double or triple strength of what's on the label and adding that to your water, right? Uh, to your pH balanced water. If you do that, you're going to get a healthier, more beautiful looking crop that will really flower out and really look great. Now what I've got here is I've got two crops at different stages of growth. Over here on the right, I've got a crop of red acre cabbage. And this crop is a little bit past harvest time. I really need to be harvesting this guy at about 10 days, and this guy is about 12 days. Now one reason I want to show you this crop of, uh, of red acre cabbage is you can see over here in this area, kind of on this end, you can see a little bit of wilt, right? And a little bit here on this crop of broccoli around the edge here, you can also see a little bit of wilt. That wilt is a sign that they're not getting enough water, okay? Now, we'll talk about exposing the light, but let's, let's water this one. Now, this one is wilted enough that I've already watered it, okay? But that's a really good example of what, that, what, uh, what it means when these guys aren't getting enough water. So over here, this tray of broccoli isn't quite ready to harvest yet. This is, a, this is a crop that's on about day eight. I want to give it two more days and some of these leaves will really get bigger and really more substantial. And you'll get, you'll get, a, you'll get you know, a lot more ounces of microgreens out of the tray if you harvest at day eight, or I'm sorry, day 10. But you know what? There would be no problem at all harvesting right now. You could absolutely harvest this crop right now. And like this tray of red acre cabbage, you could uh, let it go 11, 12 days and harvest without really a whole lot of difficulty. So a lot of, lot of flexibility on when you decide to harvest. And we're going to we're going to cover the techniques on harvesting your microgreens in in uh, one of the upcoming videos in this series. So let's take a look at watering this crop of microgreens. After you take your microgreens and expose them to the light, you've eliminated the blackout dome that we talked about in an earlier video. What you're going to do now is we're going to water this crop from the bottom. So let me show you how, how that's going to work. And of course, this is a hydroponic crop. So what we're going to do is let me just lift up that hydroponic grow pad. You can see the roots that have matted down underneath. And you can see here that that tray is pretty dry. Okay, That's why this tray is starting to get a little bit wilty. So we need to water that. And all you've got to do is just lift up that mat of grown greens and water and pour water directly into the channels of the tray. Okay? Now they take a little bit more water than you might be expecting that they do. So let me grab, uh, probably what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to pour in maybe a cup to a cup and a half of water in the bottom of this tray. And that should take care of this uh, tray of microgreens for probably about a day. Okay, so I've got here a cup of pH balanced water. Uh, pH about uh, just under 6, which is uh, slightly acidic, which is what these microgreens love. And you can look at another video in this series to learn how to pH balance your water using household materials like lemon juice, right? To adjust the pH of your water to slightly acidic, which is what these plants are going to like. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to water from the bottom. So I'm going to lift up my mat and I'm just going to pour some water into the bottom of this tray. Now this tray is quite dry. And what I want 
is I want the, the, uh, the channels of this tray to be, oh, have water, you know, two-thirds of the way up the channel. Now you can see that the mat, this, this grow pad, has absorbed most of that water, so that's not enough. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there, and that's about a cup and a half of water, and that's probably about the adequate amount. There you can kind of see there's still water coming in even after I've kind of tilted the tray, and there you go. Now these guys are watered, and that'll last probably about a day. These microgreens really drink a lot of water. You'd be quite surprised, and of course, as you'd imagine, there is a little bit of, ev of evaporation in the process. But that's all it takes to water these guys. After you remove the blackout dome and you've exposed them to light, what you want to do is make sure that they have plenty of water. The, the, the pad, the sure to grow pad in the root system, the roots like to be dipped in water. But if the entire root is submerged in water, your plant is going to drown. You're going to see areas of rot and you're going to get uh, a really unhealthy looking crop. And that's a sign that you've overwatered it, especially if you see areas of rot in the, uh, in the tray. That's too much water. But you, they take a little more water than you might expect. But the real goal here is to keep that sure to grow pad, the growing medium that they're growing on, you want to keep it nice and soggy, nice and soggy with a little bit of water in the channels of this tray. And of course this tray does not have drain holes, so you can just park that on your counter without water going all over the place. It's a perf this is perfect indoor gardening. And it's super healthy. And you know what? Next time you have a party, next time you have friends over, put together a beautiful microgreen salad with lots of colors, lots of flavor combinations. Um, some tomato, avocado, you can do sliced mango on there, whatever it happens to be. It just absolutely phenomenal. A, a, a taste and a kind of a, a culinary experience most people haven't had before. Very, very fun, very healthy too. So let's talk a little bit about exposing these guys to light. Now, most microgreens like light. They don't want light 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So make sure that, uh, make sure that in your growing that you're uh, you know, simulating a natural approach. If you put them under a grow light to 24 hours, that's too much light. They're not going to do well. They want a period of darkness. If you're putting them in sunlight, of course, that's going to regulate itself, no worries. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're exposing them to an incandescent light or a fluorescent light, that's fine. Uh, that will work. Um, just make sure they don't get light all the time. There are a couple of varieties of microgreens that really don't do super well in bright light. For example, um, oh, what doesn't do super well in bright light? Pak choy doesn't do really well in bright light. Arugula doesn't do well in bright light. Sometimes crops like that that are a little bit more delicate, the amaranths, right, red amaranth and green amaranth, will typically not like a super amount of direct sunlight uh, if they get uh, uh, secondary light or indirect light, they're going to do quite a bit better. Now, sometimes if you, give a, if you give a crop, some of those more sensitive crops, too much light, you'll see little, uh, little brown spots on the leaves. That's a little, little, basically it's sunburn, right? It's too much. So take them out and those crops will probably recover and still look pretty good. Now, what we recommend, our favorite, uh, our favorite way to provide light to the crops is with a LED grow light. And you can see that it's got a hanging chain here, so you can hang this, you can position it uh, in a rack and screw it up underneath uh, if you're using a growing rack. Um, lots of different ways to do it. And these LED grow lights are really slick for a couple of reasons. Number one is they don't take a lot of electricity. This is a pretty heavy, a pretty heavy duty grow light. It's a 45 watt grow light. Now that is less electricity than the really weak, wimpy old incandescent bulbs. Right? And this is enough to water or, or provide light for, you know, if I had three tables the size of this and had trays all over it and hung this from the ceiling, that would be plenty of light for all of these, um, all of these crops of microgreens. We have lower end uh, LED lights like 14 waters, which would be enough for four or five trays, would work really well. The interesting thing about this is, number one, they don't take a lot of electricity. Number two, they don't emit any heat at all. So that's a cool idea. And then the third thing is they provide the spectrum of light that your plants really, really love. Now, here's a cool idea. Why is it that plants appear green? Because they reflect the yellow and green part of the light spectrum. They don't absorb yellow and green. What they absorb is the two extreme ends of the spectrum, the blue and the red ends of the light spectrum. So that's what exactly what these LED grow lights will give to them. And you'll find that these LED grow lights 
will provide a greener, healthier looking crop than any other grow light you can use, including sunlight. These will perform better and get a better, healthier looking crop than sunlight. So there's an example of what these guys look like. Right, you can kind of see the, uh, the blue and red end of the spectrum. Those are precise and exactly the spectrum that, uh, that your plants love. And of course, they, they look like they've got a really cool, crazy color. But once you take those out into regular plain old sunlight or white light, you're going to see a dark, rich, green crop that just looks beautiful. Very, very cool way to grow. If you're interested in some of these grow lights, uh, check out www.growingmicrogreens.com. We've got a great selection all the way from very low end kind of occasional countertop gardener all the way up to super heavy duty LED lights for uh, industrial greenhouse capacity growing. Right? So we've got a nice spread there of grow lights. But again, I want to I wanna make sure that everybody's crystal clear that you don't need the grow lights in order to make this work. Regular ambient light, room light, sunlight, fluorescence, incandescent light will work just fine. These plants are really efficient at capturing light and using it to generate and create chlorophyll. And they'll green up amazingly fast in just a regular ambient room light. And you'll still get pretty healthy looking crops. If you want to get really serious again, take a look at the LED grow lights. So hopefully uh, that's going to give you a sense of how to care for your crops after you've exposed them to light. You've taken off the humidity blackout dome. And we're going to let these guys grow to about 10 days. Now again, this crop of uh, broccoli right here, you could harvest a little bit before 10 days. Um, you could also let it grow a little bit bigger and harvest it after 10 days. Either way, beautiful. Beautiful. Most of the hydroponic crops uh, that we provide um, and all the different varieties of seed, and we got stuff from really basic boring stuff like uh, broccoli and arugula all the way up to really exotic stuff like Tokyo bacana and pak choy, uh, mizuna mustard, that type of stuff. Really, really fun. A wide variety of flavors, delicious and healthy. Check us out uh, for supplies, kits, seeds, everything you need at growingmicrogreens.com. Thanks.